Yes, we are here. Who enjoyed this morning's keynote? Yes, hands up. Don't forget that hands up, you can also just scream until you lose your voice. That's where I'm almost at, so you're not alone. Um, this morning was incredible, but we're going to keep that ball rolling with another amazing presentation. Um, our next two speakers are actually both named Joshua, so that makes it much easier for me to try and remember names, which is always great. Um, our next talk, as shown here, is going to be on the chatbot revolution. First, we have our uh, lawyer in residence at Clio. He's been with Clio for six years and really been helping to bridge that uh, intersection of technology and legal for Clio, uh, the one and only Joshua Lennon. And then we'll also be bringing up Joshua Broder, who is the CEO of Do Not Pay, as well as a Stanford student. So I want everyone to give a warm, loud welcome, make them feel welcome to Joshua and Joshua. I'm Joshua Lennon. I'm the lawyer in residence at Clio. How many people know me? Oh, thank you. Uh, so I want to welcome everybody to the Chatbot Re uh, Revolution. And what's really interesting about today's presentation is it's actually a follow-up of a presentation that Josh and I gave back in 2017 at Stanford's Codex. And this was a bit of an infamous presentation because what happened is Josh got up on stage, gave a great demo of his system, Do Not Pay Bot. And afterwards, I got up and told every lawyer in the room why they need to be concerned about chatbots. And it was this diametric opposition that just shocked everyone. So let's tell you a little bit more about me, if this works. So I'm Joshua Lennon, I'm the lawyer in residence at Clio. Those of you tweeting, it's at Joshua Lennon. For the last six years, I've been researching the intersection of technology and law. And one of the things that I help with is helping craft and message the Legal Trends Report. And I think this year's Legal Trends Report has two very interesting facts that are applicable to the idea of using a chatbot in the practice of law. So the first of which is that lawyers have to deal with people coming, asking for consults, asking for questions, and then never hiring those lawyers. So that means, from this page here in Legal Trends Report, that 58% of lawyers are approached by people who have a legal issue, will ask a question and never hire them, and 68% definitely reach out to lawyers, either via email or other means, and again, never hire those lawyers. And so there is a significant investment in time screening out the people who are approaching you. And what's interesting in the research within the Legal Trends Report is they definitely want personal interaction. If you, how many people attended George's session on the Legal Trends Report? Hands full of people. And he did that comparison on what lawyers believe clients want and what clients will tell you they want. And in almost every category, overwhelmingly, is they wanted either in-person interaction or over-the-phone interaction. Some personal connection between them and a professional that helps them. But at the end of those initial personal connections, what do they do? They walk out of the office, they hang up the phone, and they never speak to you again. And that's leading to this enormous waste of time for lawyers, maybe some help for clients, but a disconnect between the services that lawyers offer and the methods by which we offer them. And that leads me to the next slide from the Legal Trends Report and the idea of emerging technologies. And a lot of people have looked at this stat and see it as a very negative situation for lawyers. So we asked um, people who had never hired a lawyer, people who had hired a lawyer, and people who had had a legal issue in the last two years, what do you think about virtual lawyers? What do you think about never meeting your lawyer in person? What do you think about the applicability of chatbots in the practice of law? And in every category, this gray bar that you see up here is the group that never hired a lawyer. And they are most positive in supporting the idea of never meeting a lawyer, never speaking with a lawyer, oh, and I'm fine with a chatbot. And if you're a lawyer reading this right now, you're probably writing those people off. They don't want to speak to me. They don't want to come to my office. They don't want my help. And I think the opposite is true. They want your help, they just want it in a new process. And when we talk about the untapped market for legal services, those people out there in the middle class who really struggle with the idea of affordability with lawyers, they're falling into this gray bar. They're not, not wanting to hire you, 
They just don't have the means to work with you. And that's where I think chatbots come in. They are a means to create a personal interaction, a knowledgeable transfer, and also they save you guys time in preventing you from spending time on the phone, spending time in your office, screening out those clients who are driving by trying to figure out, do I have a legal problem? Do I have a legal solution? Can I afford a lawyer? Those three questions alone can be answered quickly and easily by the person I'm about to bring up on stage. So Joshua Browder is the CEO and founder of Do Not Paybot. How many people know of Do Not Paybot? I'm not going to steal the entire story, but there are a couple things you do need to know about Josh. First of all, he's incredibly young. He's probably the youngest person in the room right now uh, because he founded Do Not Pay Bot when he was in his teens, and he's going to tell you about that. The second is he's incredibly driven, and Do Not Pay Bot's growth and functionality has exploded over the few years that it's been in business, and the sheer number of people that it has informed and helped rivals every lawyer in this room right now. And so with that, I'd like to bring Josh on stage, tell you a little bit about his story, tell you a lot more about Do Not Pay Bot, and to, I think, actually give you a sneak preview of something really big that's coming. Josh? Thank you so much, Joshua. It's really amazing to be here. Um, so my name is Josh, and I'm going to speak about um, robot lawyers and what I see as the future of the legal profession. And I'm also going to give a demo of some amazing new features we have coming out this Wednesday that I think will really um, change things for the better. So as Josh alluded to, um, I'm not a lawyer. I haven't yet been arrested for unauthorized practice of law. Um, I actually got into this whole thing by accident. When I turned 18, which is the driving age in the UK, my country, um, I got lots of parking tickets. And after about the fourth ticket, my parents said to me, um, you're on your own, you have to pay for your own tickets, this is getting really expensive. And so out of necessity, I had to figure out ways to get out of my own fines. And remarkably, um, I figured out a way to, um, I researched all of the laws and wrote these simple letters that would get me out of my tickets. There are all of these obscure rules relating to parking tickets where if the parking bay is too small or the signs are too hard to read, you can get out of your fine. And as someone who's loved software, I thought this is something that can really easily be automated. And so I created the first version of Do Not Pay to really just impress a few family and friends. And the way it works is it asks the user a few questions like a chatbot um, to determine a legally correct de um, defense for a parking ticket. Once it knows a defense, it then takes down a few details and uses those details into a generic letter. And this is really simple stuff, and I could never have imagined that um, something to just impress a few friends and family would end up, to this day, appealing over $16 million worth of parking tickets. And this made me realize that the idea of um, helping people with free legal services is bigger than just a few parking site fines. Unfortunately, when you launch a viral parking ticket website and you have an open e support email on your website, people assumed I was a lawyer and began emailing me. I probably get about 60 emails a day just from people asking for legal help, assuming that I can help them. And this is really unfortunate because I'm not a lawyer and I don't know how to help people. I've seen some really strange stuff, everything from trespassing to murder to people trying to sell their horse to, somewhat, uh, to fighting Comcast. And although it's really unfortunate and I try and refer all of these emails to the right people, it has given me an insight into what um, average consumers need. And so when expanding Do Not Pay, I wanted to go after the biggest issues that people were contacting me about. And the biggest one by far is airlines. And so the, the initial airline version was um, very simple also. In Europe and in, um, well, across the EU, if your flight is delayed, you can claim up to hundreds of euros of compensation. But really expensive lawyers were charging a 50% commission to do this, despite it being a simple letter. And I thought, why not do this for free? And so, as you can see, I created a bot that asks questions to determine eligibility and then generates this letter for you. But this wasn't enough. Those emails kept coming. It turns out that flight delay compensation is not the only thing people need free legal help with. And so I decided that why not open it up as a platform so that anyone can generate a legal bot, um, a legal letter using a bot. 
And so I went from about half a dozen bots with these consumer rights projects to over a thousand letters that can be generated. And although these were just letters, um, this led to some really interesting stuff. My favorite example is um, last, um, the September before last when I helped people sue Equifax. And I really could never have imagined that um, a, a letter to sue Equifax in small claims court would actually lead to people winning $9,000, $10,000, $11,000 um, on their own without the help of a lawyer. But unfortunately, I was once again humbled because I learned that even letters were not enough. Lots of people were criticizing Do Not Pay because although these letters were helpful and lawyers were charging previously a huge amount of money to generate them, uh, people will still weren't showing up to court on time or um, understanding really what to do. It turns out to actually help people with access to justice, you have to control the complete process from start to finish. So I decided to start from scratch. For the past year, I've been heads down, and um, on Wednesday, I'm launching 15 new products to help um, make the legal system free once and for all. And, well, I haven't shown you the products yet. <laughs> um, so I started by asking, what do normal people want from the legal system? And I came up with the three main things from all the emails I received, from talking to thousands of people, and also um, kind of reading about um, the important issues in legal tech. And it turns out it's actually very simple. People don't want to argue in the Supreme Court. They just want to get money that they're owed, uh, fight corporations, and beat the bureaucracy that holds us back. Um, an example of the first issue would be suing someone in small claims court. For the second issue, people need to get class action money they're entitled to, um, get compensation for data breaches, fight Comcast, Equifax, and bureaucracy is something that we all hate, like, for example, dealing with the DMV, no-fault divorce, simple visas, fixing credit reports, um, and uh, bail issues. And, of course, one thing that I've left out of here is criminal issues. I think that even though criminal issues touch as consumers, it's actually extremely complicated, and in the near term, um, chatbots aren't going to be helping Get, get you out of a murder trial. I think you've got really big problems if you're being accused of murder that a chatbot can't help you with. And so I asked myself, how can I address the first issue? Well, on Wednesday, it's really exciting. Um, I spent so much time making this compatible with all um, over 3,000 counties in the United States. You can sue anyone in small claims court just by pressing a button. And uh, for under $25,000, depending on the state. So in Tennessee, it's $25,000. In California, it's $10,000. And unlike my previous products, I really decided to go for um, an entire, uh, entirely comprehensive process. So by that, I mean it does everything from you, from generating the initial demand letter to helping you seize your opponent's assets if you get a judgment. So for example, it's as simple as um, logging in, selecting how much money you want, choosing one of 15 um, generic legal issues, answering questions about that issue, and then it generates a whole suite of documents to help you. The, the first is the demand letter, but it goes a lot beyond that. It then generates filing instructions and all the forms you need to file in your local county, or detailed instructions if those forms aren't available online. And then it not only um, does that, but also generates a script specific to your issue that you can read in court. So when the judge asks, asks you what you can seek, what do you seek, you can refer all the laws and um, provide a comprehensive argument. Finally, it provides a, a sort of an FAQ for cross-examination, so that even if your opponent asks, provides challenges to your defense or to your prosecution, or um, the judge asks you questions, you can be ready with all the common answers. And you may be thinking, how can this be possible? How is it that um, all small claims court issues are covered in this app? And it turns out that over 75% of the issues are really cookie cutter issues. If your landlord takes your security deposit, or um, there's been a data breach, or someone breaks a promise for you um, and doesn't pay you for um, doing some contracting work, there are only so many things that can be said in a small claims courtroom. And so we've actually um, sat as a team in small claims courtrooms across the country and actually worked in these courtrooms just on building the app um, for hours on end to listen to people's issues and came up with all of these comprehensive materials. And so I'm hoping that this will completely um, make justice available so that anyone can just 
press a button and get justice. No critical thinking required. Anyone who can follow simple instructions can now get justice. The second um, thing that we're doing is we're helping people fight corporations on a massive scale. And the product that I'm most excited about is um, you connect your email receipts um, and you can see every class action settlement that you didn't even know existed that you're eligible for. And um, as a millennial myself, I love the Tinder style interface. And so you can swipe left or swipe, sli swipe right on various class actions like the one against American Airlines above. And uh, this is all automatic. You don't have to do anything, don't have to get anything in the mail. Um, do not pay will instantly claim the money for you. And you can see pending settlements. Aside from that, there are also lots of different consumer products like helping uh, fight your bank fees, um, appealing Uber rides that you thought were too long because the driver took a lot wrong turn, fixing your credit report, everything that a consumer would want to do to fight corporations. But the most exciting thing is helping people fight bureaucracy. I would say that parking tickets was the first example of this, but the Do Not Pay app goes a lot further than that. The most exciting thing I would say is um, fighting the DMV. In California, at least, everyone needs to get a new ID because they're all becoming invalid with the TSA regulations. But the, this has led to a backlog, of, like, a backlog of about three months to get an appointment. And there are these really dodgy services where you can pay $100 and someone will keep refreshing the page for you to look for a cancellation. So those are the two options. Either you pay someone $100 to get an appointment in a few weeks, or you wait three months and you forget about your appointment date because it's such a long time away. And the reason people are doing all of this refreshing is because the DMV um, prevents bots on its website. They have something called a capture, which means you have to tick that you're not a robot and answer a few basic questions to prove that you're a human. And so in the past, no one has figured out how can I get, get past the DMV website and make finding these cancellations and getting you an appointment in a few weeks um, automated. But I came up with the idea of using the phone system. After seeing the Google Duplex demo, I thought, Google Duplex, which is a, a bot by Google which talks to millions of restaurants on behalf of consumers, how hard can it be to just talk to one organization, the DMV, on your behalf? And it's a robot on the other end. And so do not pay um, as of Wednesday. We'll be able to phone up the DMV on your behalf, talk to it like a real human being, make an appointment, and then keep phoning up hundreds of times a day to look for a cancellation. And I should mention that uh, on the other end, it's a robot as well. So it's actually two robots talking to each other. It's not, um, we're not wasting human resources of the, of the DMV. And I actually have a quick demo video to show you um, if, we, if we can cue that up. So this is the new app with all 15 products. It's as simple as selecting what appointment type you want, your zip code, how many appointment items you want. You have to wait for a few minutes while it initiates the call. And then instantly, you have your appointment date number, uh, confirmation number, and time, and location. And then just for entertainment Thank purposes, you, you can listen California to the call between the DMV and the Do Not Pay English, robot. Press one. Para Español, o prima dos. For DMV hours and closures, please listen to the latest DMV news. Main menu. To select an option, please say vehicles or vessels, order forms, make appointment, find an office, or latest DMV news. You can also say, repeat this information. Hi there. This conversation is being recorded. Sorry. Please say vehicles or vessels, order forms, make appointment, find an office, or latest DMV news. And uh, these answers are dynamic. Make appointment. Yeah. Is this appointment for a behind-the-wheel driving test or an office visit? Office visit. We offer a number of services related to driver license and vehicle registration. Which would you like? Driver license? Both. California DMV will process a maximum we, we of can three stop items the video. per appointment. Okay. Yeah. How many driver license and vehicle registration? So this will happen um, 400 times a day until you get an appointment in the next week. And so the question is, where is this all going? 
I think that in the future, you won't even have to read from a script. A bot will just be able to read it on your behalf in court. I think that the most simple legal issues, like the ones I described, not criminal, will be handled entirely by um, robots and technology. I also think that um, the average consumer, as long as they're not being accused of a crime, will never have to know what, even what a lawyer is. And I know how this sounds like a scary future, but um, I think lawyers will be freed up to help with really important issues like human rights and criminal reform, um, rather than helping fight Comcast for you. So I'm really excited. And um, contact me um, during the conference if you want to get the beta, or I would love to hear your feedback on Wednesday when it launches. Thank you so much. Thank you, Josh. I really appreciate that demo. Yeah. Uh, I think there were a couple details that you left out about yeah. your new class action project, yes. though. Um, you're actually looking for lawyers to work with you on creating class action claimants, right? Yes. So right now, it's only the publicly available settlements. Um, however, in the future, I'm looking to actually recruit people and start class actions with the, the partnering with lawyers. And I was actually up at 2 a.m. last night looking at Clio APIs to see if you can submit directly from Clio. Yeah. yeah. So if you are a class action lawyer, a mass tort lawyer, you will actually now have a tool that will enable claimants to raise their hands, identify themselves, and help certify the class for you. So that's something to expect from Do Not Pay Bot in the near future. How do they find out more information about that? Um, just email me, uh, joshua at donotpay.com. Come talk to me or check it out on Wednesday. Thank you. Now, how many lawyers have ever been asked to handle a parking ticket? Everybody in the room should be raising their hand. I get this all the time at Clio, which means we need better parking. But uh, I also know that there's no way I could actually create a business around supporting parking ticket claims. Josh has taken that off my plate. And that's literally what I say. I'm like, go talk to Josh. We will make this happen. How many people here um, know about the number of unrepresented claimants in New York City's landlord and tenant cases? Chase, what percentage of people are unrepresented in New York City's landlord and tenant cases? I don't know the percentage off the top of my head, but I know it's over 90 percent of tenants are unrepresented in New York's uh, landlord and tenant claims they now have a resource they can turn to that will at least give them some idea of the process. And so if you are not handling these cases, and for, quite frankly, legitimate business reasons, lawyers cannot handle some of these cases, right? They're too small in value, they're too frequent, uh, and people just need a quick resolution. Josh has built a tool that you can now direct these people to. So when we look back, at the Legal Trends Report data where we saw that 58 to 68 percent of people are consulting with lawyers and not hiring them, they now have a place where you can send them to take them off your plate. And you can also use the Build Your Own Features with Do Not Pay Bot to answer simple questions to help screen legitimate clients from your practice. Uh, how many people have ever been asked this question? What's it going to cost me? Right? If you have an answer to that question right now in your head, you can use Do Not Pay Bot to build a chatbot that will answer that question for you. And if it's too expensive for somebody, they go on to somebody else, and they don't waste yeah. your time. And if they go, you know what? I think that's within my budget. I'd like to schedule an appointment. Do Not Pay Bot can help with that as well. If you're looking for some hands-on experience with a chatbot that's built for law firms right now, I do recommend you stop by our integration partner and exhibitor, LawDroid. They're back past the Starbucks, and they'd be happy to give you a working demo of how a chatbot can be a part of your law firm, as well as an alternative to your law firm. And with that, let's click the next slide. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, there it is. Nope, one more, please. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'd now really be interested in taking questions from the audience on the yeah. functionality of chatbots, um, using one within your law firm, or using one to actually get rid of people you don't want to talk to. Yeah. Uh, I see Amanda in the back. Amanda, would you mind coming to the mic? And then we'll take you next, sir. This question isn't exactly to those topics, but mm -hmm. I'm just curious. How many people are on your team or, and yeah. or are you a robot to be able to accomplish all of that in a year? Oh. So it's a team of eight people and then um, lots of outsourced paralegal work for finding out the small claims issues. 
Mm -hmm. um, we, we've been working really hard. Um, I, the previous speaker was speaking about all-nighters. That's something we're definitely familiar with. We probably take 20% all-nighters. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I should mention, just to comment on your previous thing, is when yeah. I started Do Not Pay, um, I was 17, I was really naive. I thought that it would replace all lawyers, um, robot lawyers coming in to solve the legal profession. Mm -hmm. I now realize that that was really naive. Um, it turns out that it's not replacing many lawyers, it is replacing a few exploitative ones, but it's really going after the underserved need of things that aren't happening mm -hmm. in the legal system. And so, um, although it took a lot of work, we still have a lot of work to do. I think that's really important that for me, it's not replacing legal work, but yeah. it's actually just helping people, people better function in society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. And you had a question here, sir. Yes. Uh, sort of a two-part question. Do you mm -hmm. charge, let's take the small claims uh, yeah. situation. Mm -hmm. Do you charge people for that? Absolutely not. It's completely free. And, you, and it's not only free, you keep 100% of what you save. So it's not like some scam where we take 50% of the settlement or anything. So you're doing this just for fun? So I think that, um, so I'm from uh, California, I'm from the UK originally, but now I live in Palo Alto. And in California, there's an app to trade stocks for free. There's an app to fix your credit for free. Why can't there be an app to um, solve your legal okay. problems for free? So, he so here's the real question yeah. then. Mm -hmm. uh, in Washington State, where I practice, um, yeah. mm -hmm. there's scary case law making lawyers liable for helping clients do their own thing and yeah. then it goes wrong. Uh, in my case, it's malpractice. In your case, it would be yeah. the unauthorized practice of law. Yeah. I think this stuff is wonderful, but how do you avoid that kind of risk? Yeah, so if we just break down like, the legal justifications. So first of all, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm exempt from all the um, malpractice or like being disbarred because you can't He's be disbarred. He's liable in a different way. Yeah. No. yeah, you can't be disbarred <laughs> if you aren't a lawyer to begin with. Mm -hmm. And then as for unauthorized practice of law, Everything is free. The software is hosted on the internet. I think that there are strong First Amendment pr um, provisions to writing software, which is just freedom of speech. And there have been some big cases around this. There was one company which made, ev which made a platform for making cars self-driving. And the car regulator said, this is ridiculous. You can't do this. This is so unsafe. And they sued them in court. And um, the car, the software company prevailed because their software was free and open source and it was just freedom of speech. And so similarly, I think that applies here. No. May you never have to litigate that. <laughs> this is good stuff. Well, and it will depend yeah. from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. So there's case law in Texas, for example, that self-help software is not the practice of law. Um, but we know that if you are a person preparing documents in California, you have to be bonded. Right? So there will be variations based on where this is being used. And that was actually one of the things we talked about in 2017. Yeah. And Josh has taken that to heart and built that into uh, to Do Not Pay Bot. We have some more questions yeah. back here at the mic. Hi, my name is Jennifer Nielsen. I am a family law attorney in Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, I was just wondering what you have found to be potentially the limits of the type of uh, legal situations that a chatbot is helpful for? Because you had said before that you thought it was just going to replace all lawyers. Yeah. What, is that, what is that ceiling that you hit up against? Hmm. I think in the legal system, there are about 30% of all issues where everyone just agrees it's just about filling in the paperwork. And as a family lawyer, I'm sure you can agree, like no-fault divorce, where all the parties agree is just one of those issues. And there's no reason that something like that should cost that hundreds or thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. And so anything where there's no litigation is immediately fair game for a chatbot to do um, for people. Beyond that, I think there are another 20% of issues that are so simple, like a landlord security, um, small claims issue, an accident, um, things like that, that a bot can also help with. But the most complicated divorce cases, the Supreme Court, uh, criminal cases, it's a long way from helping with those. But 50% is a lot, and I think a lot of people just need help with the very basic stuff. So if we can just help them, then that would mean a lot. We've got 30 seconds left okay. for your question. Yeah. Mine's a simple question. Uh, I tried to, to go onto your site, and it, and it suggested that I was going to give you access to my private data. Mm -hmm. What is that all about? I mean, how much of my data do I have to give up in order to access the service? Yeah. So there's always a trade-off um, between letting people <laughs> do it themselves 
and doing it automatically for them. And so I think the product you're referring to is the flights product, which we released in March. And so um, this product, you connect your flight receipts, and it gives you refunds by using price protection, some um, loopholes. Um, I think just give me 10 more seconds. No problem. I think that um, mm. it's about only asking for the right data and being very transparent. So um, if you use Facebook, you don't even know what they're collecting. For us, we tell you, we need your flight receipts for a very specific purpose. And it's limited to just that. And we have strict like, technical limitations. Similarly, with class actions, it's just your retail receipts. And so I think there's always a trade-off. But I think as long as you're open and honest in privacy policy and also collect the bare minimum, then that's the trade-off you have to make. Mm -hmm. Great. I'll, I'll check again. Yeah. But it looked like I was going to have to give you access to my emails. No. My, OK, great. Thank you. All right. Josh, I want to say thank you so much for coming. Thank you. If you look forward to talking with Josh some more, we'll have some time over here. And please enjoy the break and the rest of today's presentations. Uh, and do remember that lunch, when it happens, is downstairs on the first floor. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.